Hello, who are we with here today and what are we doing? My name is Elise Miller. We're at Sacred Heart Parish, and uh, today we're making uh, the traditional Ukrainian uh, folk art kisanki. Ukrainian folk arts, okay. Mm -hmm. How appropriate for this time. Yes. So, um, although kisanki is actually made in multiple different Slavic countries around Europe, such as Poland, Russia, um, it, the practice itself uh, actually derives from the Ukraine. In fact, the name Pisanki, or Pisanka is singular, um, actually derives from the Ukrainian word uh, Pisanti, which means to write or to inscribe. So if you want to use correct terminology, you don't draw on a Pisanki, you actually you write a Pisanki, you inscribe a Pisanki. Um, and the way you do that is by a method called the wax resist method, um, which explains itself. You uh, by using a special tool called a kistka, which is a little brass cup on the end of a stick. Um, you heat beeswax and you write on your egg. And wherever you lay your wax down, that preserves the color of the egg underneath. And um, to get different colors, you can use an array of different dyes. These are a more modern dye, um, but traditionally people would use things um, like onion skins or flowers, you know, um, boiled in water to produce their dyes. But, you know, we live in a more modern age, so we got a very wide variety of colors. We've got Amazon. Oh yeah, we got Amazon, definitely. <laughs> we, uh, we source all of our dyes and all, basically all of our pisanki making materials from the um, Polish Art Center in Hamtramck, Michigan. Oh, okay. Uh, it, which is where we order all of them. They arrive in good times. So even, even Polish dill. Yes, even Polish dill. <laughs> um, we like to use our uh, jars to make ours. Um, so when you're dyeing a pisanki, there's actually a very specific way you have to dye them because um, if you don't dye them a certain way, it might mess up the different dyes. So you have to start from your lighter colors, yes. so yellow, and then you uh, eventually just go down the color spectrum all the way to black, which is the color you usually end with, uh, typically. So let's say you want to make a, a sunflower on a nice blue day. So you would start off and you dip your egg in the yellow dye. You would lay your wax down with your kiska, which actually, let me go grab one. Um, this is a kiska, by the way. It's a little stylus with a brass tip. It's got a little cup for the wax and a little uh, point there to where it come, the wax comes out of. So you would take your, um, your yellow egg and you would put your wax in your kiska and then you would draw on your egg. Wherever that wax is laid down will preserve the color underneath. So this is where you would draw in your petals, you know, of your sunflower. And then let's say you want to put your sunflower in a field, we well, could probably put it in the light green to make the grass. So you got a green egg now, you would draw on your egg um, to make that green grass. And then likewise, you know, you put it in light blue for a sky and, um, you know, whatever other colors you want. Uh, and then when you're in, at the end, Typically, you would want to end your egg in one of these three colors, either royal blue, purple, or most commonly black. It depends on your taste. And once you're in your ending color, then you have basically a fully black egg, uh, or what it looks like. And there are ways of um, getting the wax off, which will reveal the colors that you've been you know, laying the wax down over underneath. Um, and typically, you know, we just put it in an oven. I typically like to do it the more traditional way of um, waving it over a candle with a uh, rag and, you know, wiping the wax off. And then when your wax is all wiped off, you'll typically get something that looks a little bit like this. Nice little egg there. And um, you could end there if you want. We typically like to uh, use polyurethane to shine the eggs up at the end. So that takes a few days to dry. And then we like to put these little caps on them. You can have them hanging on a tree or just in your curio cabinets. Um, yep. And just a fun little uh, Ukrainian uh, Polish craft, typically done around uh, the Lenten season, right before Easter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And can you show us some of the eggs in process being written yes. right now? Yes. Uh, do you guys mind if I <laughs> we go around and film a little bit? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, you want My to egg dump. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm just making some different patterns. Oh, yes, that's beautiful. See, so right now, everything that she's laid that black wax down on will be white in the very last step. Very intricate, very pretty. pretty. I'm just messing. So we have some colored eggs over here, too. 
can see. So looks like you guys have gone through a couple of different color iterations. Uh, do you mind if we look at yours for a minute? Yeah. Okay. Um, so as you can see, kind of there's a little bit of transparency to the wax here, so you can actually see where the white will be. You can see where the yellow will be underneath there. Um, when the colors are all, you know, we've gone through all the dyes and wipe uh, wipe the wax off. Can I ask a quick question? Are yes. you holding in your water? Mm -hmm. You are. Yeah. That is a very beautiful you got green. Hey, I'm trying. Uh, kind of a few blobs, but this is fun. Yeah, very well, fun. Like you said, there's uh, you know, once you once you lay the wax down, you know, there's not much going back, but it helps you. You gotta, it keeps you on your toes and makes yeah. you makes yeah. you think a little bit, right? Absolutely. So anxious to see the final. Oh yeah. So um. To go back to more of the history of Pisanki, the art of making Pisanki and just wax resist dyeing in general actually um, goes back thousands and thousands of years. Um, and actually, um, some say that it predates Christianity, wow. but eventually, you know, as Christianity began to kind of blossom throughout Europe and such, um, the craft was taken in. So it's predominantly a Christian art now, and there are certain uh, motifs that you can find in um, uh, certain designs for Pisanki that reflect that nature. So uh, I know a lot of Pisanki generally tend to have um, the ichthys symbol in it, which is very obvious. You know, it's the, the fish. Mm -hmm. um, people use a lot of wheat. Um, come on, help me out that here. What is so? Someone... That farming, mm -hmm. the rakes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the rakes. Yeah. Oh, wow. The fish, the, um, the wheat for the bread of Christ, the grapes for the blood of Christ. Yeah, they're very... Um, Steeped in Christian music. It's beautiful. And I think traditionally people would paint the eggs as well um, at the beginning of Lent because they wouldn't eat the eggs. They would, right. fa they would fast from the eggs. And so, what, what, what would you do with the eggs if you couldn't eat them? You paint them. <laughs> right. All right. So, Lise, thank you very much uh, for your wonderful explanation. I'll be back in about an hour or so. We'll shoot some video of the completed products. All right? Okay. Good. Okay, at least what, what do we have going on here? So right now I am taking the wax off of my finished Pisanki. Um, I don't have too much wax left on this one, but I can do an example on this uh, test one that I was doing. Um, so you can see this is where I have an egg in blue, and underneath I have some that I um, did in yellow. You can see where I laid the wax down. It's kind of black, kind of ugly looking. So what we do, well first we unplug the hole on the bottom. These eggs are hollow on the inside, so... Um, if you try to heat them up and wipe, uh, wipe the wax off without unplugging the hole on the bottom, they will explode. And it has happened to us before, <laughs> which is not fun. So just going to try to get that unplugged. Got to let a place for the heat to vent out. So basically all I do to get rid of the wax is I wave it over the candle to heat that wax up. And then I wipe it off on, <laughs> on the napkin. And you just kind of repeat that. We're going to lose a lot. This is a little test one that I did and ended up not really liking. So you'll still be able to see the yellow motif, though. Yep. And in essence, that's how it works. I mean, right, usually you have nice. a lot more colors, but this is yeah. one I had as an example. Oh, look what we have here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Getting ready for scrambled eggs. <laughs> Can you show us some of these finished ones here? Yeah. So you made these just today? or Most of them we yeah. made today. Ones that okay. have like tops on, Elise made prior. Okay. And actually, there's some of Mary Catherine's in there too. Okay. But a lot of these are ones we made today. This one we made today. That one. That one. This one. That one. This one. That one. That one. Almost like a uh, Fabergé egg. Yeah. Kind of. So pretty. <laughs> I didn't see that. No, nope, I did not see that. Did you do the? No, I didn't. I didn't interrupt you. Well, thank you, Anne and Elise. Thank you very much for this little tour. And uh, I believe you do this every year uh, oh, yes. on Easter Vigil, right? Yeah, every closer? year um, we do okay. it throughout Lens as a family. And... Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Wonderful. And everybody's welcome to participate uh, next year going forward, okay? That's right. Next All right, year, okay. Good. Maybe we can compare next year to how we do. Oh, yeah. This year, next year. There you go.